Right, so hello there. Today I am delighted to be speaking to Tracy Guyon. Tracy is Senior Programme Manager for one of the UK's leading independently owned investment management firms, Bailey Gifford. And she recently programme managed the opening of a trading desk in Hong Kong, despite us being in lockdown. So you've been one busy woman, Tracy. Yeah, hi, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I have. Yep. Yeah, and despite all that, you're still happily taking on the job of being one of the menopause leads for your organisation as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. why did you want to do that? Um, well, about seven years ago, um, I had a hysterectomy myself. Um, I was told I'd go through the menopause within five years. Mm -hmm. About three, four years ago, I started experiencing hot flashes in night time, and they were pretty bad, and I was shattered all the time. Mm -hmm. um, then a couple of years ago, um, they started through the day. And let's be honest, I looked around me and I thought, I can't be the only one. So I just started talking about it. And lo and behold, I wasn't the only one. <laughs> so you got a good response to those initial chats that you had. People were like, yeah, I really want to talk about this too. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, people, once, once we started talking, it was like, we talk about everything else. And once we started talking about this, people just engaged. There were so many people wanted to be involved. I know it's crazy, isn't it? There's this kind of stigma attached to menopause and that, you know, this assumption that actually it's really personal and private and people don't want to talk about it. And some people don't, and that's absolutely yeah. fine, whether that's because of personal issues or cultural issues. But actually, yeah. for the majority of people out there, when you start having the conversation with them about menopause, they're quite happy to share some of their own experiences and support you through theirs too. Yep, definitely, definitely. So it was your personal experience, really, that, that made you bring it into the professional um a uh, professional spotlight yeah. yeah it was yeah and as you said I, I was one I'm one of those people I want to talk about it <laughs> <laughs> you're happy to share yeah <laughs> I'm happy to share well obviously I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah I know thank you so much for this today so um what would you say were the biggest challenge for you was at work with regards to your symptoms and also for you know your colleagues around you what what were they saying were the were the biggest challenges when it came to menopause and work um, I think for me the biggest challenge was really getting people to talk about it mm -hmm. um, but then as it turned out it wasn't that difficult let's be honest it affects everybody it was affecting me personally I'm fairly sure it was affecting my family although mm -hmm. I have to check with them <laughs> and let's be honest it affects people that you're sitting beside whether or not you're having a flush and they're looking at you or you're just in brain fog it, it's affecting everybody so yeah it does it's not just um you know menopause isn't about singling women out you know yeah. or women out of a certain age it's about bringing everyone into the conversation isn't it um yeah. because there's no escape from it you're either going to be working with a menopausal woman at some point in your life or you'll be living with one whether that's you know your partner your mother um your daughter even yeah. um so you know, from that perspective, you did decide to bring everyone into the conversation quite early as well, didn't you? You didn't think, yeah. oh, we're just going to focus on women, even though it was part of your women's network. It wasn't, we're just going to talk about menopause to women. You tried to bring everyone in very early on into the conversation. We did, yeah. We engaged um, very quickly. We decided on a kind of one day um, workshop that obviously, Julie, <laughs> this is how we met, that you yeah. came up with for us. Um, but we didn't want it just to be come in and talk to a bunch of women about it. Um, so we carved it up into three different ways. We had one for managers to help their understanding. Um, we had one for a mixed group of people that are living with and um, mm -hmm. working outside. Um, so mixed again. Um, and then we did have a women-only session in there as well. Um, to also involve all the other people, we went to all the heads of departments, and a few of them are male. We wanted to involve lots of different um, areas like our creative teams mm -hmm. um, and our media teams about how we really publicise this. Um, so yeah, just involving everybody that we could and the people that um, I worked with on it, um, they weren't shy either. <laughs> and I think, you know, what was what you did really well uh, at Bailey Gifford before, you know, I arrived to, to run the workshops was you run a you ran a really proper engagement and comms campaign, didn't you? It wasn't yeah. just a quick email to send out saying this is what we're going to be doing. You produced big banners. You had these uh, lovely leaflets that you set out with some uh, common facts in them. You even had a, a special logo, really a design <laughs> created for it. And that got everyone talking about menopause before um, before I even arrived on site. Yep. Um, and I think, you know, part of getting, you know, the, the problem about 
uh, bringing everyone into the conversation is if no one's prepared to start it they, with with a guy with a manager with the young yeah. design team with the with the young men who were videoing uh, uh, the series that I did then why would they think they were being welcomed into the conversation so to bring yeah. everyone in really early I think I think worked well and yeah. splitting the sessions up like that as well because obviously the the information that different people need um, yeah. can be separated out quite well so the managers for managers for example we made sure we looked at that from a legal perspective and so that they understood their you know their their risks they understood the benefits of what they were doing they understood the reasonable adjustments um, the awareness piece was to to get everyone in, involved as much as possible and then we yeah. the reason we did that separate piece for the women at the end as well was that you know whilst so most women are happy to share they might not want to share the more personal aspects of menopause in front of their boss or yep. in front of of men so it was important to give them a safe space to do that as well don't you think yeah absolutely and it worked really well i mean the turn mm -hmm. workshops were fantastic and um, we had over 130 people over yeah. the day um uh, the manager session kind of blew, blew me away and I think it did you as well. It was full. <laughs> well, it was and about 50% of the session was males as well. So, Which is uh, a really, really good turnout. Usually to get that many men to turn up to a manager session, you have to make it compulsory. And it wasn't. <laughs> and, it wasn't no, <laughs> and then they all sit there with their arms folded. Initially, of course, you know, I win them over eventually. But, um, uh, you know, it wasn't compulsory. They, they, they turned up of their own accord. And I think a lot of that was to do with the, um, the engagement that you did ahead of this sessions and it speaks yeah. really well of the kind of culture that you've got at Bailey Gifford as well. Well they couldn't escape it we had it on tv screens and, <laughs> and everything it was up on tv screens in the staff restaurant and you name it we had it going everywhere. Yeah literally everywhere you turned there was nothing yes. else to do but menopause was there. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Um, so what would you say that the, the benefits have been as a result of you? I mean when did we start this back in November last year wasn't it? What have you seen change since then? So since then, we have introduced um, USB fans are available to anybody that needs one, you know, just to, rather than having these big desk fans, you know, just yeah. a, a, a little thing. Um, and we made it as easy as requesting a mouse. Yeah, which is brilliant. And of course, you know, it, all your staff who are working from home now with their laptops, they've got their little USB fans with them. They can plug straight well, in, right? I really hope they did take them home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also added... Um, we're, it was pointed out to me that the sanitary products, which are great, they're complementary in the ladies, um, were not necessarily sufficient um, when, you're, when you're going through the perimenopausal mm -hmm. stage. Periods become a lot heavier. Yeah. So we, we ordered in a whole stack of um, super sanitary wear as well. So that's mm -hmm. all there for people to use. So yeah, yeah. brilliant. Yeah, I know, because, I, you know, when I when I speak to organisations and I say, you know, one of the really quick wins you can do is to just put some free sanitary products in your bathrooms, mm -hmm. not just to benefit uh, older women who are having really heavy periods because of menopause, but younger women, too, who might be um, experiencing issues with, with their monthly cycle. Um, and, um, you know, they're, oh, well, we're not, we haven't got the budget for that. Or we're not sure it's something that we quite want to do. And it's like, well, you provide toilet paper for free. How is this mm -hmm. any different? And, and, you know, you guys responded really well. You're like, oh, my God, brilliant idea. That is something we can sort out really quickly. And, and we did, yeah. yeah. The, long, the biggest decision was actually the unit to put in. Yeah, was it? <laughs> what, did, what, did, what did you put it in in the end? Oh, we got little um, very discreet looking metal drawer thing that just yeah. sits inside it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that, took, that probably took the longest. The decision was made in a heartbeat. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's funny where we get stuck sometimes in, the, in, these, uh, in these areas, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> um, and, but of course, since I was with you in November, the world mm -hmm. has changed. It's all gone a bit topsy-turvy. And um, we're no longer in the office. The majority of us are, are at home, particularly in your organisation. So what, if anything, are you doing differently now to, to support people through menopause, um, whether that's the people experiencing it or, or partners? Um, so what we were doing just now is we, we came up before lockdown happened, we'd come up with kind of an idea of what we wanted to do, which included bringing in yoga instructors that were specifically trained in menopause. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's a wee bit more difficult at the moment. Yeah. Um, we have also been speaking to a therapist mm -hmm. who is pulling together a virtual awareness session for us um, on different coping techniques. Now, this is to help with the symptoms focused on menopause, but we're really hoping that obviously these are going to be techniques that people will be able to use them just have a wider benefit from them. Yeah. So I, she she tried one out of me, one of these, we tap, it's called tapping and it's uh -huh. 
here and here and yeah emotional freedom and, technique yeah yeah and i've never never experienced that before so i we really hope that what what we'll get from this is people will be given a, a toolkit of techniques to take with them and, mm -hmm. and be able to um yeah cope with the hot flushes when they happen even if it's just a distraction or the positive mental um, process rather than the potentially the, the mood downers so. yeah instead of focusing on the symptom trying to trying to focus on something else to to, to help manage it because i think you know now and now we're working remotely a lot of us you know the menopause hasn't stopped the challenges have just changed slightly so actually for those women who have really heavy periods who are now working from home that's really good news for them right but, yeah, but, but you know people who are struggling with anxiety or brain fog or hot flushes either those challenges still exist especially now we're all you know on zoom every hour of the day you know a hot flush on zoom is as bad as a hot flush in person really isn't it because you know the, yeah. the impetus is there for us all to have our video on all the time so we can feel all connected but actually you know you don't always want to have your video on do you <laughs> yes um so look final question for you if okay. you were um if you had one big tip to give other organizations one place where they could start one thing that they should do to 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 really raise awareness um uh, and support people working through menopause what would that be um it sounds funny but i would just not wait there's going to be somebody in every single organization at least one that's like me and just wants to get the conversation going uh -huh. so just don't wait just speak out just get on with it Get on with it. Yeah, brilliant. I love that. I love that. Thanks so much, Tracy. Thank you so much for your time. I know I know how busy you are, and I really appreciate you you sharing your personal story right at the, at the beginning of the conversation today. Actually, because you know the personal stories I think are really really powerful. Mm -hmm. So for anyone out there who's prepared to share what's what's happening to them or how they feel, how they've overcome those challenges, it really helps to move the conversation on a lot faster within organisations. I think. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Thank you very much for your time, Tracy, and have a good day. Thank you, Julie, and you have a good one too. Bye now. Bye.